The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 13th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got your back. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. Dow's up 121 points, about three tenths percent, one tenth percent to the downside for the S&P, six bucks, six points, 131 points for the Russ on NASDAQ. That's a seven tenths of a percent move to the downside, whereas Russell's up four tenths or seven points out there. Semis are off 2%, 100 point move out there. Tranny's off 16 points, about one tenth of a percent. You've got gold trading up 10 bucks, silver's up 35 pennies, lights be crude is up a buck 67. Natural gas is off four cents, and our 30 year treasury printed out at 12013. Now, our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside, micro strategy, 130 bucks, 8%. William Sonoma, 18% move, 43 bucks. Wow, that's pretty good. Restoration hardware up 17 bucks, 6%. Uh, to the downside, you got Broadcom off 29 bucks. NVIDIA is down 23. Dollar Tree down 22, which is a 15% move there. Lamb Research is off about 2% or 17 bucks. So we've got movers and we've got shakers. But let's begin our day. Where do we want to begin our day? Great question. So I say one, one area to begin your day is watch at the end of the day that spot volatility index. Let's take a look at it. And I want to say thank you to Garo out here. So a couple days ago, two days, three days ago, uh, intraday around 11 o'clock in the morning, it was just before 11, I was considering uh, issuing a, a short trade, uh, index trade uh, to uh, subscribers out there. But I, I just happened to pull up this chart and I had put the uh, parabolic SARS dots that are on there. That's one of the tools that um, as Garo uses, he calls in on occasion. We take a look at his charts. It's one of the tools that he uses. So, and I use the uh, I use Wells Wild, well, what's his name? Wells. Well, that's uh, anyways. Um, yeah, can't believe I have a brain fart like that. In any event, um, what happened on that trading day? That was on March the 11th, by the way. The the parabolic SAR dot, which is an important area, um, was up at the uh, 1605 level. And the spot volatility has got up to 1604 and turned right back down. And those, when the dots are up top, it's telling you, basically, it's telling you you should be considered looking to trades to the downside out there. So I just said to subscribers, you know, we're going to hold off here and, uh, and and see how the day plays out. And I'm grateful for that. So, you know, you guys, each of you share uh, your, some of your tools uh, that you use, uh, to, and, uh, and and they're great. So it's great to, great to do that. So in any event, uh, back to the spot volatility index. 
I was sharing with you what Garo assisted me in doing here, but I also use that 50-day exponential moving average and use that as a guideline as to what the markets are communicating to us, whether to be short or long the market. Well, raised yesterday we had a close below the 50-day. Today we're testing that 50-day again. The 50-day is printed at 1396. The price is trading at 1392. If we get another consecutive close below 1396 today, it's an indication that price of the spot volatilics that is should move down and test that rising trend line that you see out there. That rising trend line takes us really all the way back to the trading session of uh, December the uh, 12th out there. And that's been a really good level of support on any moves lower out there. So that's what I'd be watching for. Uh, if we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator out there, it's been above uh, the uh, zero line since about March the uh, 6th out there. So for a handful of trading sessions, when prices above that, market conditions are bullish. tells us that generally speaking, uh, buyers are the ones that have the edge. And with regard to the spot volatilics, it's the um, it's the same signal out there. It's telling you that uh, buyers are the ones that have the edge if prices below the 50-day and sellers have the edge if prices above that level. Another area to be watching out here would be these Apogee pivot points. So uh, Apogee and perigee are the two lunar phases that measure the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Apogee is when the uh, uh, Moon is furthest away from Earth during the current lunar cycle, and perigee is when it's closest. Well, we had Apogee come in, I believe it was on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, sometime right, Saturday or Sunday. When it comes in on a Saturday, on over weekend when the markets aren't trading, then what I do is I identify the close of Friday and the open of uh, Sunday. Now, when those are pretty close and I don't really worry too much about it. Well, the interesting thing here, and I can't can't tell you why it works. I, I sort of can, but I won't uh, because I don't. I, it's not a. It's not fa something I can factually uh, prove to you. I can factually prove to you how well this so-called random that appears to be not so random point in time. Because when I market, folks, I market right to the minute. So the spot, except for a weekend out there, uh, and of course, unless the futures markets aren't trading at that stage, and then you've got to go back to the, the prior. Uh, close or the uh, current uh, or the current open out there. But if you take a look at this, if you take a look at the NQ this morning as it was moving lower into the 10 o'clock time frame. The actual low was 1830275. The actual apogee pivot point 1803.50. You gotta love it. And what did price do from there? Has bounced off of that and it continues to rally. Now, if price closes below that 1803.50 level, then we're gonna get a short-term um, bearish signal. Short term. Well, these are 30 minute time frame charts that you're looking at out here. And you can see those pivot points. In the case of the spinny price never even got down even close to that level, which is the 5196 area. Now we can see that silver's trading above uh, uh, its apogee pivot point, and gold is not. Gold's got to get all the way up to 2186 out there. Lights Recruit is trading above it. And the 30 year treasure, or not 30, I don't have the 30 year, I got the US dollar index. Um, Trade lower, maybe headed to that 10237 level out there. Okay, so let's uh, do this here. The NQ is one that's getting the schnot kicked out of it, so to speak, this morning. If you will, it's the one that's trading lowest, down six tenths per cent, about 118 points. So let's go take a look at its charts. To do that, we'll go take a look at the intraday charts, move over to the uh, to the uh, white background charts out there. Uh, you know, I owe an apology to Tom G. He wrote in yesterday and I forgot to write it down on my computer out there and he wanted to take a look at the semis. The good news is, Tom, that uh, Lee M. Uh, wrote in. He wants to take a look at the semis and the semiconductors as well. So we're going to do that when we get back from this break. But right now, if we take a look at the NQ, we can see that that oscillator and change line ran into res is where resistance held on the daily time frame. That's now printed about the 18508 area. We've uh, been up to 18507 today. Uh, the uh, five hour time frame chart is. Uh well, it's not likely going to complete a TD9 count pattern, but we won't know until about 2 o'clock this afternoon out there. What I'm looking for, is there any bottom signals? The only bottom signal I see right now comes from a 15-minute time frame. That's a uh, TD9 count bottom, but this, the scary thing here is price found resistance at that red oscillator and change line. So the NQ, as far as bottoms out there, even though it found a bottom at that Apogee pivot point and we got this 15-minute, it's not out of the woods. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got the stock charts up uh, for the uh, semiconductor index out here. Uh, that's what Tom was asking about yesterday. Uh, Lee wrote in about this this morning. B By the way, Lee, uh, your last name. I don't usually use last names uh, on the air. I try not to. Um, uh, to protect the innocent, and uh, but uh, but I do know uh, some folks with your last name live up in the uh, Boston uh, is area up there, so I don't know if you're related to that. But in any event, his question goes like this: Day before yesterday, you had as usual an excellent response to a question about Nvidia and the uh, socks. Um, in looking at Nvidia, it had on Friday uh, what accounted to be a huge double bearish engulfing candle. So I assume he's saying double. So I'm going to go over that chart, stock chart right now. So I'm going to switch over from here and try to go over to the um, NVIDIA chart. So when he says a double bearish engulfing candle, what he's referring to, uh, now that I look at it, uh, uh, is he's looking, he's, he sees that it engulfed the prior two days sessions. That's all. So we're looking at the body of the candle compared to the bodies of the prior candles out there. Okay. Uh, I looked up how accurate bullish, bullish engulfing tend to be. Now, this was a bearish engulfing. And got a guess mate of 79%. So I don't know what that is, but okay. Also saw what was called a sushi pattern. Well, you know, sushi patterns, that's something I can buy into. No idea what it is, but it's, if it's a Stevie sushi pattern, well, you'll enjoy yourself. A multi-day engulfing. Okay, NVIDIA was a, a two-day engulfing. Okay, what's your opinion on the strength of bearish engulfings? How accurate are they? Then he goes on to say, shocked to see how unbalanced... The weightings of the SMH is compared to the semiconductor index. Yes, so I've shared that with folks in the past, that they're paying attention to the semiconductor index and they're trading the SMHs and they're not paying attention to the SMHs. Two totally different weightings. So let me show you what Lee uh, is you know, pointing out out here. And here is the uh, here's the weightings. Each of you can grab this. You just do a little uh, internet search on this. So this is uh, the iShares 
uh, for the uh, semiconductor in ETF out here, the SMH. So let's go take a look at this. Hold on a minute here. And, no, I take that. That's for the semiconductors. And here is the VanEck SMH. So if you take a look at the first one out here, this is waiting as of yesterday, as of last night, March the 11th out there. Well, that's as of March 11th. Today's the 13th, right? So that's from two days ago. And this one's as of March 12th. Take a look at NVIDIA. The waiting here in the semiconductor is at 11.67. The waiting inside of the SMH is... 26.73%. And if you take a look at it, it's got different instruments. They, they may have some similar interests. They may have many of the same instruments, but they all have different weightings out there, substantially different weightings. They're very important. And, and, and Lee points this out, and thank you for doing that, Lee, and, and then really in essence for asking me to just simply to post that so that people can see. you got to know what you're trading when you trade those ETFs out there. You want to understand what those top 10 instruments, top 8 instruments are doing. Oftentimes, they can represent more than 50% of the weighting out there. So the question is, this question is, uh, so first, with regard to, you did a, a search with regard to bullish, maybe bearish engulfing candles to see how accurate they were. But you don't know what that's comparing it to. So here's where Stevie uses bullish and bearish reversal candles. It is only at the completion of a pattern. That's where bullet, That's where Japanese candlestick charting really has its meaning. Now, I take a look at it during mid-stroke. So, for example, if you got an A to B equals CD to the upside and you get some type of bearish reversal candle, all it does is it sets up a resistance level. It doesn't mean that the move is over. It just sets up a little bit of resistance. So here, we take a look at the NVIDIA charts and you take a look at the daily time frame. You can see that bearish engulfing candle. By the way, it doesn't matter to Stevie whether it engulfs one session, two sessions, or ten sessions. The point here is that that candle formation came at the completion of the pattern. That's where it has the most value. It identified at least a short-term top, and certainly it did that out there. So that's one thing. Then once you've identified a top or a bottom pattern, it is incumbent upon yourself to be able to identify support and resistance. Now, one of the easiest tools to identify support and resistance out there is the TD9 count pattern. The TD9 count pattern on my system, you will see green horizontal or red horizontal lines. Those identify where an instrument either broke out or broke down from. And those can act as real key levels of support or resistance. So that's one thing. Anybody can do that. If you don't know that pattern, just subscribe to Mastery Probability. There's workshops out there. It tells you exactly what to do. And each of you can make your notations on your chart each day for those instruments that you trade out there. So that's the first thing. The second level of support that I use out here, and it is so valuable, um, and I don't get anything for suggesting that you go get this, but you really should, are those profile levels. Because it gives you and I an un a competitive advantage out there. A very a, an uncompetitive advantage, really, if you, take, if you think about it. So if we take a look at this, and we so that's, so that's step number two out there. And then the third thing that you really want to understand with regard to an instrument is what are its dance steps out there. And when I refer to dance steps out here, I'm referring to consecutive days higher and lower. Here is NVIDIA. And in a bullish market, in a real strong bullish market, the retracements will last for no longer than two consecutive sessions. Normal retracements in a bull market are between two and four consecutive sessions out here. So if we take a look at NVIDIA, we just simply come back here into the October time frame. We can see one three bar move to the downside, then price moves higher, another three bar move. We get five bars to the upside. Once you start getting beyond Five, four, once you start getting beyond four bars in any direction, it typically tells you about the change in the, that the, the, the signal strength is to the upside out there. So you can see what took place after that big, huge, bearish engulfing candle, disappointment would happen on March 8th, a little bit of a sell-off out there. We had a two-bar knee-jerk reaction low. Yeah. So you want to understand these things. you got to really, you don't have to. I'm suggesting that you put all of these tools together because it will help you to um, understand the message of the markets out there. How accurate are they? They're very accurate at helping you and I identify at least a short-term or intermediate-term or even long-term top out there. Then what's most important is understanding where are support levels and how does price react when it gets to those different support levels. Here in the case of NVIDIA, price is not broken through support. Yes, it's also and change on was one level of support. We saw a close below that for one session. And then we got right back above it. Well, one day wonders, one hit wonders, that's all that they are out there. You and I were looking for something more consistent than a one hit wonder out there. That's why we at least look for twos, two consecutives uh, to close above or below support or resistance out there. So in order for NVIDIA to suggest that it has any kind of change in trend, 
and this year would be considered a profile change in trend, you would need to see a close below 821.60. You would need to see two close below 821.60 out there. Until we get that, NVIDIA right now is somewhat neutral. And it's neutral because price is trading with inside the profile. It's potentially, yesterday it closed back above that green oscillator and change line. If it does that again today, it just suggests that price should get up to test resistance. That's up at the 935.90 level out there. So, um, and I, and I, Tom, I don't recall, I think you had gone, you were looking maybe at going long I don't, I don't recall what you were i apologize i don't recall what you're doing i just remembered in the middle of the night oh my goodness i forgot to respond to tom's question see he kept me up and now he didn't keep me up i just realized that i had forgotten to uh, do that so with regard to the smh let's get over to the uh, semiconductor index itself so let's get back to those charts see what kind of signal information is coming from it and if i look at a 15 minute time frame we can see we close below the prior bars blow out there that's on a 15 minute basis it tells us about momentum to the downside same on the 30 minute looks like 48 68 42 is at least the next target level to the downside inside the semis if you close below that then we're likely going to go target the next support level and that would be down at the 48 22 level for i'm sorry 48 32 level so 48 68 and 48 32 are what you want to the downside inside the semis steve rhodes with tfnn great right The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey, because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, just to close out the discussion on the uh, semis, uh, the, I'm showing you the SMH out here. Uh, this ETF, you can see that this has a uh, Rosemont indicator top that was confirmed with that bearish engulfing candle that we were speaking about uh, earlier that appeared in the semiconductor index chart itself. And this has got support at 217.90. Uh, so um, 217.90 uh, is support. If price were to close below that, then the next area of support would be at 208.79. Uh, the weekly time frame, you're likely to confirm a TD9 count top this week. That would suggest that the uh, SMHs are getting ready to pull back towards the 208.50-ish area out there. And on a monthly basis, we have to wait till we get to the end of the month before we make any calls out there. So that's uh, it for the semis. I hope that that uh, helped uh, each of you out there with regard to that discussion. Let's move on to our next request. This is coming in from uh, Nicholas. And Nicholas wants to take a look at both the Russell 2000 equity future contract and the IWM. So let's pull up the Russell 2000 equity future contract. He's really interested in short-term signals out there, short-term time frame. So I'm going to start from the bottom right. That's a 10-minute time frame. So the bottom right panel out here does not have a topping pattern did trigger Rosemont Dominicator signal and I triggered that at 10.30 this morning, but we've not seen a bearish reversal candle yet. Just because the candle's bars, uh, the bar of the candle is red doesn't mean it's bearish. Just tells you where price opened and closed. Just because it's green doesn't mean it's bullish. Just tells you where price opened and closed out there. What we do have on a 10-minute time frame for the Russell 2000 is a consolidation with inside its profile for its 10-minute time frame. That says that 2095 is a key level of support and 2105 is a key level of resistance. We can see at 2095 on the 50-minute time frame, that also was a test of support out there. So that's a key area to watch from a short-term standpoint, Nicholas. If price were to close below that, it would signal a move to lower price. Uh, my initial instinct with regard to where that move could take us to would be down at about 2083. But that's not the condition we have right now. The condition we have right now at 1132 is that they, on a very short term time frame, 10 and 15 minute, and I'd say I'll add the 30 minute time frame to that, is price wants to get up and go target that 2105 level. 2105 is a resistance point on the uh, 30 minute, the 15 minute, and the 10 minute. So it's a pretty strong level. And if that were to get taken out, that would be a short term, very short term bullish uh, signal to the upside. Uh, 60 minute time frame chart for the Russell 2000 is bullish. What I mean by that is price is trading above all resistance areas. Same thing for the 120 minute chart. Same thing for the 240 minute chart. And and same thing for the five-hour chart. So the real issue here then with regard to the Russell, you can see is that daily oscillator and change line. So they, so we may rally, we're going to rally a little bit further or we should rally a little bit further. But what you've got to really keep your eye on, 2104 is the magic number out there. If we see a close above that, that would be from a daily standpoint, that would tell us that price is likely going to get back and test that TD9 count topping pattern from a few days ago. Now that's the signal information from the Russell 2000. Let's go take a look at the uh, IWM. Now, in the IWM, I've just got daily, weekly, and monthly. I'll pull over a 30-minute time frame chart as well. In the case of the IWM, if you're going to use that number out there for the daily time frame, that's key resistance, is at 206.42. If price is able to close above 206.42, that would be signaling price to get back to test that TD9 count top. You can see on a weekly basis, price is already trading above resistance. That's at the 205.49 level. That's the top of its weekly profile. So I tell you that that daily oscillator and change on is a real key area for you to watch and observe. The monthly time frame is bullish out here when we take a look at the IWM. Bullish because we're trading above a green oscillator and change line. That tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Bullish conditions, period, end of story. No other way of looking at it unless you get an actual topping signal like a TD9 count or something like that. But in this case here, the monthly time frame chart is uh, simply uh, bullish. So watch that 206.52 on the IWM. Nicholas, I hope that helped you out short term with regard to the Russell 2000. A right, request from S&P inside the Tiger's Den. He'd like to take a look at Hood, H-O-O-D out there. So we take a look at it. 
Hood formed a wave number seven, that top that got negated. That was on the trading session of March the 4th, but that was also a TD9 count top. And that still remains in place out there, but it's uh, being threatened as we speak. So the key area here in, in Hood that you want to watch for, S&P, is the high from the trading day of March the 4th. And that's at 1722. We're at 1719 right now. What happens if we close above 1722? What happens is its TD9 count pattern gets negated. It also would take us on a daily basis above TD9 count, I'm sorry, above profile resistance and above that oscillator change line. Again, bullish conditions. And that would tell you that hood is going to head higher. Now, we can see an A to B equals CD pattern out here. I'm going to just simply draw it in on the weekly time frame. It's got a lot less noise, much easier. This formed a TD9 count bottom out here and then if I just simply cut and paste I'm sure we're beyond the one-to-one -one level just want to make sure and now we just simply yeah so we're beyond the one-to-one -one level out there uh, so what the weekly chart says the only pattern that is out here that could identify a potential top would be a bearish reversal candle we certainly don't have that as we speak right now so price should continue to move higher out there and the monthly time frame chart for hood shows us that price is trading above profile resistance out there so that chart is uh, a bullish so in order for the daily chart in hood to get bullish SNP you need to see it close above the high for March 4th again that number is 17 22 out there. I hope that that helps you out with regard to that set of charts out there. The next request coming in from Hector and Patty. And Hector and Patty want to take a look at uh, Agnico Eagle. AEM is a ticker symbol. Let's pull that chart up on our screen out here. It looks like it's breaking. Well, that's not it. It was K Web. Well, I'm sorry. K Web. Let me do K Web, Hector, because that was actually next in line. And the question here is what's going on? So I see an A to B equals CD to the upside, it looks like, on a daily time frame. Let me go ahead and open this up. Yeah, because this is taking out a TD9 count top. It did that yesterday. That TD9 count top was from February 27th. Now, that was a swing point with volume of 19 million shares. That was taken out with 34 million shares. So what you have inside of K-Web as we speak right now, we'll draw it in and I'll give you the approximate. I'm not going to measure this right to the T. I'm just simply going to move that A to B line over to the C area. And this gives us a one to one price projection around the 28 area. Now, price along the C to D leg is much stronger than it was on the A to B leg. This says this has a real good opportunity of doing more than a one to one A to B equals CD to the upside. But you got to watch this as it moves higher. There may be other patterns that show up, such as a TD9 count. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart, all that is good and well, Stevie, on that A to B equals CD. But I just want you to know I've got a roadblock, and that roadblock is sitting at 2775 or 2731 as we speak right now. So the next real upside battle, daily it proved to us yesterday it wants to move higher. But you still have to respect the other levels of resistance that are out there. And right now, as we take a look at K Web, that's at 20. 775 and if price get above that we should continue to move higher with that next battle being at the 2908 area and i think that we said on this year we had an a to b equal cd in the 28 ish area so that would become your range so really 2775 28 2908 that's where your next battleground is likely to be when we take a look at kweb we get back to this break we're going to go take a look at aem for hector and patty and if there's other requests that come in, we'll take a look at those as well. We're going to look at PayPal. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. So we're taking a look at the stock chart here for a Geco Eagle AEM is the uh, ticker symbol. We can see that uh, today it's breaking out above profile resistance. This is a profile that formed yesterday out there, 5576 of the resistance level. Uh, you got a nice profile change in trend signal. That's the good news. Now I got to share with you the bad news. The bad news is today will become bar number nine of a TD9 count. Now, TD9 count pattern, the high uh, can take place on the bar following bar number nine. I don't have anything to suggest that that won't be the likely outcome here. Uh, but uh, we are nearing a point where we could see at least a short term top. Now, the cool thing is that we have that new profile from yesterday. So if we do get that, uh, well, we're going to get a confirmed TD9 count today. There's unless this thing just sells off miserably. And then if it does, then it's got some major problems out there. So you're going to get a confirmed. TD9 count top today inside of AEM. You're going to get a completion of that pattern come tomorrow. That should take price back to support. That's the beauty of that new profile, though, because the first level of support would be at the 5576 area. We look at a weekly time period. Now, there's no A to B equals CD patterns or anything along those lines. I don't think that this retracement here from uh, the trading day of March, the uh, February 23rd to that low of February 28th is 0.382 retracement so it looks like it's less than that out there but it doesn't matter because even if we did have an a if we did have an a to b equals cd pattern <clears throat> you'd wait for a bearish engulfing a bearish reversal candle not a bearish engulfing bearish reversal candle to confirm that pattern now the weekly chart looks pretty good too the week's not over but price is trading above profile resistance that's a bearish structured profile so that's pretty nice at 55.44 there is no topping pattern out here we're trading above a prior swing point so this is telling us it wants to get up to 60.20 now, TD9 count patterns do fail. So uh, whatever the high of the pattern is, whether it's today's high or tomorrow's high, the highest high between these two days, if price closes above that high, that tells us about a strong momentum moving to the upside. And you could take a look at a Nico Ego heading up to 6020. 6105 happens to be the resistance point on a monthly time frame. That is the top of its profile. So that's what we see when we take a look at a Nico Eagle. If we look for the very short term time frame, very short term would be a uh, 30 minute time frame chart. Um, 
B, C, D, E, uh, E, F, G, B. Yeah. So you are in wave number seven out here. You also in bar number seven. In order to confirm this wave seven top, you've got to have a lower high on the 30 minute basis out there. But this could be getting ready to form some type of top in the next couple, short term top in the next uh, couple of hours or so. If we look at its dance steps out here, we're going to see uh, what? I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to open it up. We're going to see that it's been pretty strong move, right? After coming off of the bottom, February 14th out there. Happy Valentine's Day. And had a three bar move to the downside. That's your knee jerk reaction low, typical knee jerk reaction low inside a bull market. Now, what do we have? Uh, well, this is going to go away tomorrow, but uh, we had a one bar move to the downside. It's very strong out there. But nonetheless, we have to respect and pay attention to those TD9 counts. Well, I don't know if we have to respect them, do we? I don't know. Let's go open up the chart. Let's go see if we got any other TD9 counts out here. Yeah, the bottom was a TD9 count. Seemed like that was a good thing to respect out here. Here's a TD9 count that did fail. This is the one from January the 11th. Once you fail, tells you you're headed lower. We can see the results of that. Here's a TD9 count top back on October the 18th. That certainly led to a multi-week move to the downside out there. So, yeah, I'd say they're worth respecting out there. But, again, you know, it's not like you back up the truck. You're just aware of the uh, signal and when an instrument may be topping out. And that's usually pretty helpful. Now, do we got to go from here, though? We can't just take a look at that instrument and be able to make a call. What's going on inside the GDX? That's a good question. So let's go take a look at it. Just so it turns out that I put that on the chart, too. Well, what do we see here with regard to the GDX? The daily time frame is going to go ahead and confirm a TD nine count top today. Again, much like AEM, uh, price here is traded above the top of its daily profile that formed yesterday. So that's nice. But again, this TD nine count top is going to go ahead and complete by tomorrow. And that suggests a retracement. And that retracement could be just back to 29.94. The top of that daily profile, if it gets below that, we're looking at somewhere between 28.72 to 29.13. The GDX weekly chart looks very much like the AEM chart. We're trading above its bearish structured profile. 29.79 is resistance. The close above that this week would be good and next week as well out there. But no other pattern that I see. Uh, the monthly chart on the GDX looks better than AEM in that price is already trading above the resistance of its TAS monthly profile at 29.56. So that's what we have going on inside the GDX, TD9 counts out here. Now let's go take a look at uh, Goldilocks and Silver. Let's go see what they're doing. Why? Because of the correlation, the directional correlation that the mining stocks have with regard to gold and silver out here. So when we take a look at gold, what do we know? We know gold already has a TD9 count top, and that had us moving lower. Obviously, today we're trading a, just a tad higher. Hasn't gotten down to that oscillator and change line. It does have a bearish structured profile. 217180 is a very key level to watch. If we got to close below that today, that tells us we're headed to 2144 or even 2109 or even 2033 out there. We look at the weekly time frame chart. I don't see anything bearish about it, but we still want to respect the fact that we still have a TD9 count top on the gold chart for its daily time frame. Now, we take a look at silver. What is silver doing? I do not have any kind of a topping pattern other than price has gotten back to 24.95. What's so special about 24.95, Stevie? That is the TD9 count breakdown resistance area. And even though we don't have a topping pattern, that was also a TD9 count top up there. Even though we don't have a topping pattern, this is a week, uh, that's the daily chart we're looking at. Um, that's a resistance area. So we've got uh, top inside of gold. We've got the GDX. It's got uh, TD9 count tops out there. We didn't take a look at all the other instruments inside of gold. We could take a look at one other. Let's take a look at Newmont Mining because I think that is the uh, number one waiting. Still, I believe that's still the number one waiting. Uh, let's put that in here. And what Newmont Mining was doing was running right into resistance this morning when I looked at it, right at the top of its profile. And that's a new profile from yesterday. So I don't have a topping pattern like the TD9 counts. But we do have is uh, Newmont Mining is right at resistance as well. And the top of that profile out there is uh, 34.55. So not a guarantee that we're going to see some type of top and a pullback. But boy, uh, you know, we'd have to investigate more of the uh, mining uh, stocks out there, but the uh, first two are saying, hey, we're up at resistance or we've got a topping pattern out there. So I hope that helped you out, Patty and Hector. Thanks so much for writing in. S&P wanted to take a look at PayPal out here, so let's pull up those charts. PYPL is the ticker symbol. Beautiful day out here. Looks like it's trying to confirm an A to B equals C to the upside. The B point would be from February 29th. That had volume of 17 million shares today so far. This has done 10 million shares. So you got to confirm A to B equals C to the upside. Doesn't mean that you'll get there because you've got to deal with the resistance level. But first, let's draw in the A to B point. Let's, uh, for our purposes, let's go ahead and copy and paste. 
Let's move that over to the uh, D point out there. So it says we get up to about the 6388 area. 6350 happens to be the top of that daily profile for PayPal. So watch that area. You got a level of resistance. Now, what you're looking for here, doesn't matter if it gets to resistance. That doesn't say, I'm not saying sell. I'm saying be aware of the battle. Uh, if you did get a bearish reversal candle as price gets up to that $64 area, then you'd have a Gartley sell pattern. That would be what you're on the lookout for. On a weekly time frame, PayPal has resistance at 64.13. So right in that A to B equals CD quadrant area, and 68.65 is a monthly resistance level, and that is the top of its profile out there. So PayPal still looks bullish. And we can say it still looks bullish. Why? Well, if we come open up the dance steps out here, this had a nice uh, seven bar move into the uh, high on March the 1st. And then we get a three day pullback out there. So PayPal, for its daily time frame, looks like it wants to continue to rally. The question is, what's it going to do when it gets up in that resistance zone in the 63 ish, 64 level? See you, with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Two more requests to get in. Uh, one is from Snowball Inside the Tiger's Den. This is for Broadstone Net Lease Inc. BNL is the uh, ticker symbol out here. So we take a look at it. What do we have? Uh, I'm looking for a bottom. It's the weekly time frame chart, Snowball. That's the one that you want to keep an eye on. And that is uh, because it's going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom pattern on Friday. Now, the low right now came in on bar number eight. We're in the bar following bar number nine. That says what right now you need to watch like a hawk. Uh, the level of 1452. If you get a close below 1452, BNL wants to target 1373. And the reason you want to watch that like a hawk is because the monthly time frame chart is trading below profile support out there, which is at the 1544 level. We have just a good old fashioned consolidation on the daily time frame. That's between 1465 and 1507. Still watch that weekly TD9 count bottom. If you were to get a close or two consecutive closes above 1507, you then have a daily profile change in trend to add to your weekly TD9 count pattern, and that would tell me that price is going to continue to move higher with on the weekly chart that oscillator and change line being the next key battle, which would be up around 1544 out there. So nice TD9 count bottom. The last request uh, on the weekly time frame. Last request coming in from Mike in Pennington, and Mike wants to take a look at S-O-U-N. S-O-U-N, those are the charts we have on our screen out here. His question is, how's the charts look? This is for Soundhog. That looks pretty good out there. Why? Well, if we take a look at the daily time frame chart, we don't see any kind of a top out here. We're trading above a profile. We're trading above a green oscillator and change line. We are trading into a swing point, though. Mike, let's go take a look at the volume here. That was from February 27th. That swing had volume of 301 million. So far today, you're up with 69 million shares. So it's coming into that swing point with lighter volume, but you're still in it. I would expect that high to get tagged. That is at 791. The weekly time frame chart is bullish without any kind of topping pattern the same thing can be said for the monthly time frame so that covers uh sound hog ai out there and i uh, hope that helps you out so folks a uh, pretty smooth show today thank you for all of the requests stay tuned for all the great programming that we've got lined up i'd love you to have a wonderful wednesday but please join me on terrific thursday take care be safe out there <laughs>